Michelle Glass here and welcome to the first of our biology 2010 anatomy and physiology lectures. The topic for this presentation is epithelial tissues. Now when I talk about epithelial tissues, I like to think about these as the tissues that line the body. And when I say they line the body, I mean you will find the top layer of your skin, so the very outermost layer of the body is composed of epithelial tissue. When you look at the lining of any passageway or organ, you'll see that that's also composed of epithelial tissue. So lining the inside of the nose and the mouth and the esophagus and the stomach, small, large intestine, rectum, anus, all of that would be epithelial tissue. So you would see this tissue lining your glands as well. So you can think about this as, you know, if you're right side out, it's epithelial tissue. If you're looking at the body inside out, it's also epithelial tissue. Now, as we are naming our epithelial tissue, we will see that typically it falls into the pattern of having two names. The first name is telling you the number of layers. If you have a simple epithelium, then that means it is a single layer of cells. And if it is a stratified epithelium, then that means it's layered. So that means two or more um, layers of cells. So they're stacked one on top of the other. The second name is usually giving us the shape of the cell. And here you're looking at the cell membrane, so the outer border of the cell. But also you can look at the nucleus, the center of the cell there to give you some clues on shape. Squamous or squamous epithelial tissues um, are going to be oval and flat, somewhat squashed, if you want to think about it like that. Cuboidal epithelial cells will be cube-like. Now remember, these are 3D cells, so this would be a full box. But as we are looking at our photographs and our slides, you're seeing one side of the box, and so it will look somewhat square. And the third shape is columnar, which of course means column shaped. Again, these are 3D cells, but as we are looking at our pictures and our slides, you will be looking at just one side of the column, so it will look somewhat rectangular in shape. We're gonna start out today by looking at simple squamous. So right away, we should start thinking about simple, meaning one, layer of cells and our squamous tells us that it's going to be a squashed cell or flattened. So here if you're looking straight down at the cell it very much looks like a fried egg. So here we get the oval shape from our cell membrane and we can see at the center of our cell we have our cellular nucleus. Now, this is looking down at the cell. If you're looking at the side, we would expect to see a very flattened cell with a very flat oval shape um, nucleus at the center. So that's the side view there. Okay, so let's take a picture. Let's take a look at an actual picture of a slide of a simple squamous. And that's what you're seeing here. So we should be able to sort of trace out our oval shaped cells. Notice here that we're looking at the top view of our cell. We do get a little bit of overlap as you can see here, but they're not stacked one on top of the other. You are seeing your darkly stained nucleus. See here you're looking at the top of these cells here. So I like to think about if we're using the fried egg analogy, then this is looking at the egg in the frying pan or on your plate. So you're looking down at it. The next type of tissue, oh, let's go back, I'm sorry. For your simple squamous epithelium, you should keep some examples of where these are located um, in the body and also a functional description. So when we're looking at a simple tissue, let's actually go back to this information here. I'll just slide, okay, here. When we're thinking about um, layers of epithelial tissue that are simple shaped, 
you should think about these as having the job of absorption or secretion. So basically movement across the cell is very easy. When you're looking at something that is stratified, you should think about this as having the job of protection because there are several layers, so it's difficult for material to cross one to the next. So let's look again at our simple squamous tissue. Because it is simple, we will see that this is uh, modified for absorption um, or secretion. So material can easily cross over this barrier of cells. We will find this tissue lining the alveoli or the air sacs in the lungs. We'll also find this tissue lining the capillaries, which are the blood vessels in the body that allow for either nutrients to cross into the bloodstream or um, gases to cross into the bloodstream or those nutrients and gases to cross out of the bloodstream. So the capillary is actually the location where material can cross in and out of the bloodstream. So these are some good examples. Taking a look at our next tissue here, we're looking at the stratified squamous epithelium. So stratified here means that we're gonna see layers. Because we have layers, we should automatically think about this as having the job of protection. It's gonna be difficult to get material to cross through several layers of cells. We still have a squashed or a flattened oval shaped cell. So here we're gonna be looking at the side view. So you're gonna see that flattened side. Remember you have a flattened oval shaped nucleus that you can see there. And you're gonna see it stacked. So this is that layering. As you do go down in your layers, you will see some changes in the shape of the cells. So whenever you are determining the um, shape of the cell, you should always look at that outermost layer of cells. So you'll see that it's attached to what's called a basement oops, membrane. And then out here would be the um, outermost layer. As you are looking at your epithelial cells, you very often see this sense of like a um, top and a bottom to your view. So here would be that basement membrane. And right here is your lumen, which is your cavity or your space. So remember your epithelial tissues are lining the insides of your organs, the insides of your tubes, um, insides of your glands and so that opening space of the tube or the organ or the gland is referred to as the cavity or the lumen. So as you are going from the outermost layer here to the innermost layer here, notice that there's some changes in the shape of the cell. So you always want to make sure that you're looking here at the outermost layer when you're determining cell shape for your stratified cells. Look at how thin those cells are and how flat that nucleus is inside um, that cell. And you can see that it is very layered here for this tissue. Your stratified squamous epithelium has the job we've said already as um, protection. You will see stratified squamous epithelial lining places where you have lots of abrasion and cell loss. So you'll see it lining the um, mouth. You'll see it lining the esophagus. You'll see it lining the rectum and the anus. You'll see it um, lining the vagina. You'll see it making the outermost layer of the skin epidermis. So um, any of these would be good examples of location for stratified squamous. 
The next tissue we're going to look for is the simple columnar. So remember, simple tells us that it's just one layer of cells, and columnar tells us that it is going to be column shaped. So here we're going to see a tall rectangular shaped cell. It's going to have a really big oval shaped nucleus inside the cell. And that's really what we're going to be looking for. Um, remember, we're seeing that simple um, epithelial tissues will have the job of either absorption or secretion. And we'll see that here. So as we're looking here, it's kind of difficult to see, but this down here would be that basement membrane. And so here we have our tall shaped cell like this. We have these really strange glass-like looking cells here which are referred to as goblet cells. If you see goblet cells in the course, in my class especially, that's going to be a clue that you're looking at a simple columnar. Here is your lumen, so that's your space. So we are looking at just one layer of cells here lining that space. And notice that they're tall, and you can see that nucleus there. Simple columnar is often found lining the stomach, the small and large intestine. And we will see then that it has the job of secreting digestive enzymes to help digest the nutrients inside that lumen. And then it also has the job of absorbing those digested nutrients through the cell so that ultimately they can make their way into the bloodstream. Our next tissue that we're looking at is called pseudostratified ciliated columnar. So we can start with the easy word columnar tells us that we have a column shaped cell. We see the term stratified here, which we've talked about as layers, but here we have this prefix pseudo, which means false. So as we are looking at pseudo stratified ciliated columnar, we will see that it will appear layered, but technically it's not. The reason for that is because, whoops, we have our basement membrane and we have some cells that are tall and some that are short mixed in here. So as we're looking at our layers, it looks like they are stacked, but technically they're not because you have some that are the short and some that are tall. This term is ciliated is referring to the presence of cilia which are these hair-like extensions of the cell that are modified for movement. Now, in this particular tissue, we will see that it will um, secrete mucus to help trap things that you inhale. We'll find pseudostratified ciliated columnar in the upper respiratory tract, so lining the nasal passageway, lining um, the uh, trachea and bronchi. And so it will secrete a mucus um, that will trap any pathogens or dust, debris that you're inhaling. And then those cilia will actually move that um, mucus and trap debris into the esophagus. So you'll swallow that into the stomach and break down any bacteria. So it is protecting the upper respiratory tract. So you can use protection as a function. You can always also use secretion as a function because it will secrete that mucus. Now here is our picture of our pseudostratified ciliated columnar. And so we can see our tall column shaped cells. We can see some of these smaller ones here. So those nuclei are sort of, um, excuse me, jam packed. The key thing that I always look for is the presence of the cilia, these little hair-like looking extensions of the cell, again, modified for movement. The next tissue we're gonna look at is called simple cuboidal. So of course we know simple means one layer and cuboidal means cube shaped, but here we're looking again at one side of the cell and so it's gonna look to us somewhat square in shape. Now those um, 
simple cuboidal cells, animal cells, just have a cell membrane on the outside, so it's not going to be a perfect square. Because it is simple, this is going to be uh, modified for absorption and secretion. We will see the simple cuboidal lining your kidney tubules, which is where urine is made. So we'll actually see movement of material um, out of the lumen, so that's the lumen there, and into the cells and from the cells into the lumen. So we will see crossing of material back and forth between these. So here what we're seeing is a single kidney tubule here, and it is lined with the square shaped epithelial cells. Notice how big and round that um, nucleus is because how big your cell is, there's plenty of room for um, that nucleus to be nice and round. So the cuboidal shape is coming not from the nucleus, of course, but from the cell membrane. The last tissue that we're going to look at is the transitional tissue. Now this one is not following any of the naming rules that we first introduced. The transitional epithelium is not named based on appearance, but rather based on its function. So it's actually going to line the urinary bladder. Um, oops, what am I writing there? Bladder. And the urinary bladder has the job of holding or storing your urine. And so what we will see here is that the transitional epithelium can transition between an expanded form when the bladder is empty or a compressed form when the bladder is full. So it's actually doing a little bit of a stretch and a recoil based on whether the bladder is full or empty. We will see the transitional tissue is stratified and so it does have the job um, of protection, excuse me, protection. And here's our picture. So here is the bladder. This is where the urine is. This is actually going <clears throat> to be um, expanded cells. So our bladder is empty. And you have really big, kind of oddly shaped um, cells here lining the bladder. Now what I look for with this, again I can see that it's stratified and the way that I can tell that it's different from the stratified squamous, which is the only other stratified tissue in the presentation, is how large those cells are on the outermost layer. If you go back and look at your um, stratified squamous, let's do that real quickly here, here we go notice how thin those cells are and how thin that nucleus is. So let's go to the very end. Our transitional epithelium we've mentioned is located lining the urinary bladder and as a result of that its function is protection.